Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as always I have just a couple quick announcements. Um, the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course, I'm sure you guys have heard about it, 39 hours, doctors get continuing education, credits for it, nurses, dietitians, health professionals. Um, but this is a great program that teaches the um, how to use diet and lifestyle interventions in practice and um, amazing, amazing program offered through virtual classroom. You can be any place and take it. We have people in foreign countries who take it. It starts tomorrow night. So believe it or not, if you hurry up, you could get registered to take it. And then everything is focused on fall conference right now. Our conference every year in Columbus, November 13th through 15 is the date this year. We have Dr. Kelly Turner, the author of Radical Remission. She's the first person who's ever done a study, conducted a study on how terminal cancer patients survive. I mean, this is an issue that's touched all of us, right? And she's our keynote speaker. Dr. Richard Ablin, the guy who discovered prostate-specific antigen, he's going to show his film, which you've never seen before. And uh, he's going to talk about why you've never seen it before and talk about his amazing book called The Great Prostate Hoax. Robert Whitaker, who wrote this unbelievable book called Anatomy of an Epidemic about psych drugs. Dr. Marielle von Lanthan is going to be talking about gastrointestinal disorders and um, specifically inflammatory bowel disease and diet. Dr. Janice Stanger, hormones and diet. Lots of amazing information. You cannot miss it. You've got to come here to Columbus in November. So you can go online, watch a little video about all the exciting stuff that's going to go on and um, download an application to get registered. All right, so a couple things to talk about today. And the first one is genes and cancer. All right, so misleading information about the relationship between genes and cancer causes people to make, I think, two dangerous and incorrect assumptions. The first one is, well, cancer doesn't run in my family, so I don't have to worry about it. That's a dangerous assumption to make. The second one is, cancer runs in my family, so it's almost inevitable that no matter what I do, I'm certainly going to get cancer. Um, but neither of those statements are true. And the reason is that research shows that genes really don't have much to do with health outcomes. And I think people would make much different decisions if they actually understood this. Now, one area of study, and of course, I have to select a couple studies to make my point here, but, but there are lots of studies on identical twins. And the reason why identical twins are such a great point of reference is that obviously identical genetic material, well, believe it or not, the incidence of uh, the concordance of breast cancer in identical twins is only 20%. And that's as high as it goes, by the way. A research group in Utah looked at the incidence of cancer in first degree relatives, parents, siblings, children, as compared to the general population and found that genetics was a factor an average of 7% of the time. Some of the specific um, uh, diseases were prostate cancer 2.2, uh, thyroid cancer 8.5, breast cancer 1.8, melanoma 2.1, and colorectal cancer 2.5. So identical twins up at 20% for breast cancer, general family history as compared to the general population, uh, concordance very, very low. The group reported, this Utah group reported that 90 to 95% of cancers are caused by habits such as smoking, diet, alcohol, and other similar factors. And they concluded that, and this is a quote, cancer is a preventable disease that requires major lifestyle changes. Now, these studies and others like them, again, I, I pick a couple to feature, but they're from a wide variety of studies that show the same thing. Um, environmental factors and diet and lifestyle factors are the key to cancer prevention. So whether or not you have a history, of, a family history of cancer or you don't, um, you can control a great deal of your risk by not smoking, not over uh, um, uh, imbibing with alcohol, maintaining, working at achieving and maintaining optimal body weight, adopting an optimal diet, exercising, etc. So when I say that the assumptions are dangerous, you know, if you think that cancer doesn't run in my family, so you've got permission to just eat, drink, and be merry and not worry about it, bad idea. Cancer runs in my family, doesn't matter what I do, I'm a helpless victim, bad idea in both cases you know, whichever camp you fall in, you can reduce your risk of cancer a whole lot. And regardless of genetics, if you make the wrong choices, your risk of cancer is going to be a whole lot higher. So as the researchers say, cancer is preventable with the right style, lifestyle changes. And I like the fact that they said major lifestyle changes. Um, we have too much what I call, uh, and that this leads us to the next topic, but too many, too many times people are proposing minor changes that don't really make a difference. These researchers acknowledge major changes to lifestyle. 
All right, so the next um, thing I'm going to talk about, and this isn't based on, this is based on articles that show this to be true, but it's more of an editorial, and it has to do with why is it so hard to lose weight. We have a lot of people who have joined Wellness Form Health, um, and weight loss for them is a very elusive goal. They've been working at it for a long time. And they lose some weight and they regain it and they start the cycle all over again. They become discouraged when the weight doesn't come off and they go back to their old eating pattern. Why bother? Nothing I do works. Other people will say things like, well, I have a slow metabolism, so weight loss is just really hard for me. That's true to a certain extent. But let's talk about why it becomes increasingly difficult to lose weight and increasingly easy to gain weight over time. So let's start with this issue of metabolism. What is it? It's the number of calories a person burns each day. About 65% of the calorie burn results from activities that you don't have to think about. Just breathing in and out, your brain function, your heart function, nothing deliberate going on there. Another 10% is burned up digesting your food, and then the balance or 25% is actual activity, moving around and exercise and you know, walking up and down the stairs and all the things that we do for daily living. And, and again, exercise, running, the gym, etc. On the surface, if you look at that, it, it sounds like, well, if I just lower my calorie intake and increase the calorie burn, particularly from exercise, then that'll take care of the extra pounds that I put on over the years. But of course, there's more to the story. And this is where body composition and metabolism and understanding this become really important. So the more muscular you are, the more calories you burn. All right, A pound of muscle will burn an average of 14 calories a day, and a pound of fat will burn an average of 3 calories a day. So what happens is, it, it is that as you age, your metabolism will slow down. It doesn't have to. There are things that you can do to keep that from happening, and I'll get to that in a minute. But what happens is people lose muscle mass and they gain, and they gain fat. And so a person in her 20s, for example, might burn 2,200 calories a day, but 10 years later, as a result of changes in body composition, is only burning 2,100 calories a day. So 100 calories a day doesn't sound like very much, but it adds up. In fact, it adds up to the place where every year 10.42 pounds of weight gain results, almost always fat. And nothing changes. This is what makes it so hard for people to understand is that I'm eating the same thing today that I ate 10 years ago. I do the same things today that I did 10 years ago, yet the same amount of food is putting weight on my body. And the reason is that your metabolism has slowed down unless you've been aggressive about maintaining a high metabolic rate and keeping a lean body. Okay, so the cycle can continue for the rest of your life. Every year, your body, uh, your body composition changes adversely, your metabolism slows down, easier to gain weight, harder to lose weight. So I'm gonna start with, if you're currently normal weight and you wanna stay that way, a combination of eating optimally, very important, and the right type of exercise, also important. Maintaining a lean body will allow you to keep your metabolic rate higher. Now, strength training in particular is good for achieving and maintaining um, more muscle mass in a lean body. And one of the ways in which people benefit, or another way in which people benefit when they do this, is that not only does a lean body burn more calories at rest than a body that has a lot of fat, but in the exercise, when you exercise, um, in order to keep the lean body, your metabolic rate goes up during the exercise and there's something called an afterburn afterwards, so your metabolic rate is higher for a period of time. Now, how much higher that metabolic rate goes? Well, it depends on how intense the activity is. So, you know, if you're out running miles, seven minute miles, you're gonna have more of a calorie burn and an afterburn than if you're running 10 minute miles. And if you're lifting heavy weights in the gym and really aggressively engaging in boxing and that sort of thing, you're gonna have a higher calorie burn than if you're doing something that's less aggressive. All right, so this is how you can withstand aging. In other words, don't be defeatist about this. Gosh, if I age, I'm going to burn less calories. I'm going to have more body fat. Nothing I can do about it. Lots you can do about it, and this is the thing to do diet and exercise. Now, if you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight, you have to pay attention to metabolism, but you face some challenges to start. The first one is eating enough calories daily. Cereal dieters have done calorie restriction usually by the time they get here and over the years have been brainwashed to think that more is better meaning that the more calories you restrict the faster and more the weight loss will take place 
which is really not true because what happens when you don't eat enough food is your metabolism slows down even more in addition to the adverse changes in your body composition. This is how humans survived for years when we were uh, decades, millions of years wandering the planet when food wasn't as readily available as it is right now. So um, what happens is your metabolism slows down, it becomes easier to gain fat and lose muscle mass and, and particularly rapid weight loss that's not accompanied by exercise and, and, um, and calorically inadequate diets, a lot of these raw food diets and that sort of thing eventually catch up with you. They accelerate weight loss in the beginning but boy do you pay for it um, in the long term because of a lower metabolic rate. So insistence on eating a very low calorie diet, and we get a lot of resistance from people that just, the psychologically, the idea of sitting down to lots of food is really foreign to them, uh, continues to low, lower the metabolism even more. And if you combine that calorie restriction with skipping meals, the metabolic rate comes down even more. So this is one of the ways that dieting results in weight gain instead of weight loss. And if you're serious about losing weight, you gotta fix this and eat four to six meals, meals a day. And it's, Dell will tell you this, and he's struggled with his weight for a long time. The skinniest people in this building are the ones that are packing in the food, all right? So um, lessons to be learned uh, about that. The second thing, no less important, is exercise. Now, the goal of exercise is to burn calories, build muscle, and lose fat. Now, what most people, or many people, I should say, call exercise just isn't enough to accomplish that. Walking your dog, weeding your flower beds and cleaning your house. Um, I do other things, I don't have a dog, but I, I have a very active life outside of the gym. Not enough to burn muscle and really work at either maintaining or regaining that muscle mass that we all need. That's not, that doesn't work. And the other thing, we call it exercise light. This is exercise done so as to avoid discomfort. It, it's not enough either. And there's no shortage of people out there that will tell you that if you're uncomfortable, you shouldn't do it. Well, I got news for you. If you're gonna uh, overcome sometimes decades of a weight problem, you're gonna have muscle soreness. You're gonna be uncomfortable. There are days I don't like doing it. I'm kind of a gym rat, you know? So um, you're just gonna have to buckle down and get some discipline about this to overcome um, the issue. But, but here's the good news. It, I mean, there's a lot to this, obviously, understanding it, but it does boil down to something really simple. You've got to eat an optimal diet, which not, not only means choosing the right foods, but eating enough calories and, and that sort of thing. And you've got to exercise. That means doing the right type and the right amount of exercise in order to beat this, this weight problem once and for all. And I've always thought that one of the frustrating things that um, people go through who struggle with weight is having to start over again and again and again. They're experiencing the first six months of the misery 25 times. And um, uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday who has been through this for a long time. And she said, you know, for the first time in my life, I have passed that six month mark when I always used to revert back and, and do the wrong things again. And, and I'm really conscious of the fact that this is like a big milestone for me and I have to be really uh, diligent about not letting that happen again so I can just get rid of this. She said, and I could feel the exhaustion in her voice. She said, I am so tired of this and I, I understand. So if you're really tired of it and you wanna put it behind you, this is the key. Diet, exercise, the right diet, the right exercise. All right, that's all for today. As usual, we'll pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.